So I love how it's designed space-wise, but I don't love how our remodel has gone. We have tons of storage space in here. Down here, we actually took out the shelves and built a, our own little wine cellar down here. But I don't camp, I glamp. Hi, I'm Ann Klump. This is my husband, Brian, and our dog, Skipper. And we've been traveling full-time in our Class A Integra Aspire since April of 2019. So we're here to show you on. So welcome inside my house. We're here in the kitchen. It's one of the things that I loved really about our layout of our plan was the kitchen and how it's set up. It's really super convenient for cooking. And I cook pretty much everything that I cooked in our old house here in our kitchen on wheels. So we have this stack of drawers that slides out and gives a really great amount of space for being able to do a lot of prep work, cutting board, still lets me see the view out this way. We have a double sink here, which is great for washing dishes and having one set of, one sink for washing, one set for rinsing. So we have a microwave convection oven, which is a little bit of a learning curve for figuring out how to work it. But once you get past the learning curve and you read the manual, you can cook all kinds of things in here. We have a two burner propane cooktop. So we cook most of our dishes on the stove here. And then I also have a few extra conveniences like the air fryer that's been really super handy. We have a slow cooker. I have a sous vide and I really love to cook. So there's a lot of cooking that happens in this tiny kitchen. Um, I have actually tons of counter space for doing my prep work. And really it's a great like triangle for, they talk about the magic triangle really for uh, production. So you have your refrigerator right here. I usually have my um, cutting board set up here. And then I've got my sink really close by and my garbage is right here. So everything is close by for, just being able to prep all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so we keep in here, we have like just some cups and glasses, a couple of serving trays underneath here. This is like one of the least accessible uh, cabinets up here. So it's just a little hodgepodge of things we don't use very often. In the cupboard here, we have um, used an office organizer to put cutting boards, cookie sheets, uh, a couple pan lids, dish, dish drains up just on the top there. In this cupboard here, we have plates and then some Tupperware kind of storage, food storage things. And I have a huge, huge pantry. So, and I have things really organized by bins. Our um, shelves don't have big lips on them. So in order to make sure that everything is stable for traveling, I've put everything in bins. So just on the other side of the kitchen, we have a big residential refrigerator. And this is awesome because if we're going somewhere that we are gonna be away from uh, grocery stores for any length of time, we can really get two full weeks of produce um, and we have lots of space actually for freezing meats and getting frozen vegetables. So, and then the pantry, which is great because there just is a lot of space for storing food and we can easily survive for a few weeks, if not a month or so. So just really big, um, keep beverages in there, lots of produce. Because it's residential, I don't think we have as many problems with things freezing that sometimes people who have and live in, um, in uh, with smaller, you know, uh, RV refrigerators, sometimes have problems with things freezing, but we typically don't. So we um, wanted to have a way of keeping track of where we had been. We knew a lot of people had maps on the outside of their rigs that showed how many states that they had been to. Brian wouldn't let me put one on our rig. So I decided that I'd find something that I could hang on the wall. And I found this. Every state that we have been to, there is a picture of us or Skipper or something that we have done um, in the state when we were there. And it just is easy to have it printed and then we can add it to our map. So this is our travels since we started. I think we've been to 28 states. Uh, we're in Florida now, so we still have to add that. 
And we're going to add this year, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven new states this year we have planned. So kind of fun. Before we had our motorhome, we actually had a 35 foot sailboat that we, it was basically our floating summer cottage. And we had discussed a plan of a five year plan for going full time on a sailboat, not necessarily that sailboat, but on a sailboat. And after a couple of years, Brian looked at me and said, so this five year plan, when does it become four? Every, and, every year I would ask her about it. She'd always say in five years. She kept saying five years, five years. And finally I called her out on it. So finally, <laughs> after those couple of years, I was able to admit to myself that I really like land a lot and that I couldn't really see myself living full time on a sailboat. And uh, I admitted it to myself and I admitted it to Brian. And he brought up the idea of living in uh, in an RV. And to which she at first responded, do you remember the first thing that I told you on one of our first dates? Yeah, on our very first date, I told you I don't camp. Right. <laughs> but I don't camp, I glamp, <laughs> and we live full time in our motor home now, so. When he brought up the idea of living in the RV, I had never ever walked into an RV. I'd never been, yeah, I'd never been in an RV before. Um, but it was kind of like a light bulb had gone off for me because I knew that there were a lot of really amazing RVs that were out there. And we had lived on our little floating island of our sailboat. So I knew that I could live small and the RV opened up the opportunity for us to be able to travel full time and still be on land and still have the conveniences of land around us. We are walking into the half bath that's midway through our coach. Uh, we have access to it when we're driving, so it's one of the great benefits of Having a Class A motorhome is being able to get to the half bath and also being able to get to the pantry or the refrigerator uh, when we're underway. So I don't love our half bath. I love how it's designed space-wise, but I don't love how our remodel has gone. So we have just a vanity with a sink and then the toilet, and uh, there's a fan for venting out, which is great. Because the toilet is a gravity toilet and goes right into our holding tanks, uh, it doesn't take as much water as what uh, the other toilet takes. And so if we're boondocking or we're living off the grid a little bit, then it's really about using this bathroom just to conserve water. This is a really great selling point for us since we started uh, looking for our motorhome. We loved that there was a king size bed. We loved that there was a little table on either side for us. Um, to have our CPAP machines and also to have a little bit of storage space under them. There's a window on either side, which is really nice for catching a breeze when you're sleeping. The ceiling fan here, which is great also for having a little bit cooler sleeping temperatures. And of course we have Skipper's little stuffed puppy there because he has to sleep with us every night. We have tons of storage space in here. Um, so we actually have four televisions in our motor home, which is more televisions than we had in our sticks and bricks house, including one that's here in our bedroom, which we never watch. Um, but there's a really great um, use of space behind here, which we have set up as a big charging station for ourselves. So there's lots of power cords and, um, a different adapter for all the different appliances that we use, and then our manuals that go with our coach so that if we have something that happens when we're traveling, we can try to troubleshoot ourselves. Lots of storage space. So pretty much these drawers are the drawers that Brian uses. Um, I have these four drawers for my clothes, and then there's uh, various clothes and 
some other kitchen equipment because I can't give up all my kitchen equipment. So my extra cupboard up here is full of stuff for the kitchen. So we're here in the master bathroom and it's all the way at the back end of the coach. We do not have access to this bathroom when we're driving, unless of course we climb over the bed. Um, but that's not a problem for us, especially with the half bath. We do have quite a large shower that's here, plenty big enough. And because of the skylight that's up there, there's a lot of headroom, which is really nice, especially if you're a taller person like Brian is. We have um, over here in this cupboard, we have a washer dryer mix. We had originally when we moved in a washer and a dryer, and we opted to swap that out for the combo unit. We added a little bit of storage below that for shoes and for vacuum cleaner and a little bit of storage above it for the laundry soap and some other cleaning supplies. And then behind me, we each have quite a large um, side of the closet um, with plenty of room for hanging clothes. And then we have a ton of storage space that's here in the vanity with lots of drawers for and cupboards for towels and for some rags and toothbrushes and all that kind of stuff. So there's really tons of room for storage back here. So we are now in our living space is what we call it. Call it living room, family room, whatever you want to call it. And one of the things that we loved about this floor plan was the fact that the couch and the TV are opposing. The other thing is, is I work full time. I have a regular 40 hour a week job and also needed a place for us both to work. So we have uh, this here, which I replaced the mount so that I could pull this out. I can turn this completely 90 degrees and then I can sit there at the dinette and work. So I use this as my monitor. So the fireplace is actually for heat. So it does uh, turn on and does put out a lot of heat. You can also just turn off the heat. So sometimes we'll just use it for ambience. The other great thing about this too, is a lot of people don't realize that with these uh, fireplaces and these kinds of setups, you can actually take the fireplace off. It's really easy with just a couple of screws. And behind there is actually a ton of space for storage. So it's really like a secret hiding spot. So in terms of the dinette, uh, this is great. This uh, will actually pull out to give us a little bit more space. And that's usually where we keep it uh, all day long or during moving days, we slide it in, which provides us enough space, like what Ann was talking about for us to be able to get back to the bath or the pantry on our uh, travel days. Down here, we actually took out the shelves and built uh, our own little wine cellar down here. The uh -huh. other thing that we did <laughs> is we installed these uh, Silvey uh, wine glass holders. And these are just magnetic, so it allows us to hold the wine glasses. And we keep them there all, the whole time, even on drive days. And we've been on some bumpy roads and haven't had any problems. So on this side of the coach, when we actually bought the coach, it came with a, like an L-shaped sectional couch. Uh, we had that removed and we had a, a, this, new couch in, this new couch installed by Lambright Furniture up in Elkhart. And then the other thing we had purchased is these uh, cabinets on each side. And then also what we did in here, just to brighten it up, the if you looked in the back of the room, you'll see the, the, the uh, window coverings or the sconces and things like that around the windows. So we had all those taken out and just replaced them with some curtains. We have no plan for the foreseeable future to change how we're living. Um, we've talked about slowing down our role a little bit just so that we can be in a single location for a little bit longer because moving every week or every two weeks is uh, pretty fast. Our goal when yeah. we set out was to move once a month. Last year we moved 40 times. <laughs> so we really have failed on that moving just once a month. So we're going to try to just slow things down a little bit this year. It's hard because it seems like, you know, you have this bucket list and it seems like you might check something off your bucket list, but even when you are at that place, 
the Grand Canyon, for example, like we spent a whole week at the Grand Canyon going to the canyon every single day, but there's still so much that we didn't see when we were there. So I don't really feel like we completely checked off the Grand Canyon. We just said we've been there and now we have to go back again. So you add that and then all the places that you learn about when you're on the road that you just keep adding to your bucket list like it just every, grows and grows every time we check one thing off it seems like we add 10 more on yeah <laughs> for sure obviously when we're driving these chairs are swiveled around facing the other way but once we parked the great thing about these chairs is to make them part of the living room uh, so then we're able to uh, provide enough seating in the space. I mean, we've we've had eight people sitting here comfortably for a party or something to that effect. So it's really great. These seats are really comfortable. This one actually reclines, so it does have a recline feature. This one does not because for some reason they don't want you to have a recliner when you're driving down the road. And then we also had this built about the same time when we had the the cabinet built to make this space a little bit more usable for throwing our keys at the end of the day or what have you. So driving this thing is actually great. Uh, the Integra coaches are actually known for their smooth handling and driving ability and ride quality. And uh, I love driving this thing. It is so much fun. And the nice thing too about tag axle is it doesn't feel like you're having to fight the rig all the time. Even when a big semi or something passes you, I mean, it's, it's really not that much different than driving a big van or, or something like that. So you don't really feel that wind effect. You know, when we were selecting a coach, uh, we test drove different sizes. And uh, that was one of the features that we really loved about this coach was how well it drove. It was one of the main selling points. Also in the front up here, we got lots of storage, uh, lots of spaces. And we use this space in particular for a lot of our safety gear including cones, flashers, in case we get stuck by the road, handheld walkies, etc. Of course, you can see behind me yet another one of those TVs, uh, which we primarily use on drive days, which is great for displaying the navigation. So my wife will be sitting in the passenger seat and be able to help navigate me uh, as we're going down the road. So one of the things that we get asked a lot in our travels is what I do for internet. Working all day, every day, I'm on a lot of Zoom calls and a lot of uh, video calls. So in that regard, I need quality internet. So I actually have quite the setup. Uh, one of those entails the Starlink, which for the Starlink, I was actually able to find this flagpole as well as this mount, which mounts into our hitch system. Gets that thing up in the air so that we don't have to worry about trees as much. Make sure that we get good internet. The other thing I use is a lot of cellular routers and connections. Pretty much have coverage from all the major providers, including AT&T, Verizon, uh, Sprint, and T-Mobile, which gives me a lot of redundancy, failover capabilities, depending on where we're at. But these days with Starlink, Starlink has pretty much been working for us wherever we've been. Okay, so outside, like I mentioned, we had the, the opposing slide outs for the living room. We also had opposing slide outs uh, in the back half where the bedroom is. So a total of four slide outs. Also, in terms of the slide outs, they are all electric with electric motors as opposed to hydraulic systems, which is really great because if we ever have a problem with one of the motors on the slide out, they're actually all interchangeable. So if I had to, for example, even that big slide out with the 2000 pounds with the refrigerator, if that slide out broke for some reason, I can take the motor off of the slide out that's in the bedroom, which happens to be right underneath the bed attach it right there and I'll be able to bring that slide back in. Also here on the outside, uh, one of the upgrades that we did this summer is we had solar installed. We have just under 3000 watts and a total of 12 panels. So lots of power from the solar capacity, which has been fantastic. We haven't had much of a chance to use it because we haven't been doing much boondocking since we had it installed. But the couple times we have used it, we were able to recharge our batteries to full typically by noon the next day. So it charges really fast. And in terms of the batteries, we have two Game Changer 3 Battleborn batteries, about 540 amp hours.
So uh, we do both work from the road. Brian works a very um, serious 40 plus hour a week job in IT as a governance risk compliance uh, head. <laughs> and I am a content creator for myself and for others. So my business is On the Road of Adventure. And that's where people can find me on Instagram and on Facebook and also on our website. And then I'm also creating some content. I've written for a couple different magazines, Rootless Living and RV Destinations, and producing some content for some other RV related um, things. Life short. Yeah, you don't know about tomorrow, whether or not it's even gonna be there. So uh, I think for us, that was, one of the big factors for wanting to really, exp we loved traveling before we did this lifestyle. And of course we still love to travel and nothing better than to be able to travel in your own home or you have your own bed and all your own stuff with you and um, not having to live out of a suitcase to do it. So, you know, my, when people ask me if I have any regrets, if, you know, if, if I get tired of it or whatever, and my answer is always no. Like, there's always something new to see, something else to go do, and people to meet. We love meeting new people too on this journey. And it is an amazing community uh, as far as that goes too, in terms of all the different people that you meet on the road. Lots of new friends that we've made along the way as well. And, um, you know, probably life, lifetime friends, I would say. Mm. And uh, we can't wait to see what's around the next bend, really. So thanks for taking a tour of our tiny house and we hope that you'll come check us out and follow along on On the Road of Adventure. And you can find us on Instagram. We also have a blog and uh, the Instagram handle is On, on the, the Road, Road of, of Adventure. Adventure.